Good evening, everyone, and welcome. How fitting it is to conclude our activities in this stunning building by first processing into the rotunda and then gathering for the investiture of our 11th president of this wonderful college and now to come up to the third floor to celebrate that which grounds us in our work, in our endeavors, and our desires among staff, faculty, our trustees, our administration, as we move forward into our future. And it is my pleasure now to invite Dr. Carolyn Jacobs to offer remarks from our Board of Trustees. Good evening. Okay, come on. It's a long day, <laughs> but there's a voice out there. There's an energy and an excitement. And those of you who know me, I'm an African-American woman, relational connection, spent six weeks in South Africa and Botswana this summer. So when you greet people, you greet them in that sense of relationship. And this is a wonderful time of relationship in the Elms community. So good evening. Okay, <laughs> on behalf of the Board of Trustees of Our Lady of the Elms College, I welcome you to the blessing of St. Joseph Chapel. As Sister Mary Reap said during the Board's discernment regarding a chapel on the campus, we have a jewel in the heart of the campus community. We are now fully present to the jewel that has been restored, not only to her former beauty, but beyond our hopes to a beauty now offered to God as an anchor in the heart of the academy. This chapel is a sacred place of prayer and Eucharistic celebration for the intellectual and spiritual life of the community. It is an ever-present reminder of a place where students, faculty, and staff can pause in the midst of their busy day to offer a prayer of petition or gratitude. This is a welcoming space that invites all members of the Elms community and visitors to be present in the heart of the Elms College and our intellectual and spiritual life, walking between classes moment to stop and pray before the Eucharist. I think it's just an extraordinary sense of the academy at her best. We have come here as neighbors serving neighbors through and with the love of our God in a place where all are welcome and when we speak to each other, we respond. Thank you. Thank you, Carolyn. Perhaps as you were coming in, you noticed a beautiful portrait on the wall outside of our chapel, and it is a portrait of Helen Sheehan Damour. And here to share remarks from the Damour family is Michelle Damour. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Pres. Good evening, Bishop and Father Mark and President Tomei. Thank you for letting, allowing me to be here this evening and, and the Sisters of St. Joseph and all the other honored guests here tonight. Um, you know, Helen, Helen believed in a God who had spoken uh, to us in sacred scripture and, and sent his word to redeem us. She, was, she believed in a loving and personal God who has created each of us. She was a Catholic woman who lived one day at a time trying to do what is right and strove to do God's will. As many of you know, Helen charted a path for women in business in the Pioneer Valley. She took great pride in doing her job well with compassion for those she served. She was a success in her career in large part because she employed the tenets of her faith in good times and in difficult times. And like all of us, there were many difficult times for Helen. 
It was only natural that Helen be drawn to Elms College, founded by, founded by women of faith and dedicated to developing women, and now men, in faith to be good stewards in making a positive difference in the community in which they live and work. Helen was a longtime supporter of Elms College, having served as, as the development, in the development office for several decades as a volunteer. She served on the Board of Trustees, was an honorary doctorate recipient, and recipient of the Via Veritatis Medal. Helen was thrilled with the advancements made on, on the campus in recent years, particularly the new science building. Helen was well aware of the fragility of the former chapel and its need to be replaced. Knowing that having a place of worship on campus serves as the very foundation of everything else that is done here, this need caused her great concern. In the last few months of her life, Helen repeatedly told me she hoped she would live long enough to help Elms College create a new chapel and to be here to see it open. While she did not quite make it, she still managed to help. I know she's here today, smiling her gorgeous smile, and celebrating with us the christening of this beautiful place of worship as many more decades of students are formed in faith and reason on this campus of Our Lady of the Elms. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. This room has great history contained in it. And the Sisters of St. Joseph know so much of the history of this room. And so we stand on great shoulders when we pray together in this room. And here to share some remarks on behalf of the Sisters of St. Joseph, Sister Kathleen Keating. As the college looks forward to the future with this beautiful chapel as its anchor, we remember an earlier age. This incredible space served as the reading room of the original college library. This is where Sister of St. Joseph, Sister Anna Maria Walsh, or Sister Teresa Daniel, some of you remember, with extraordinary skill and intelligence, developed an outstanding library representing the excellence and professionalism for which we all strive. Many a student, now maybe I should just have to talk about myself. <laughs> While reading in this inspiring atmosphere, could not help but feel and think that she, and most of the time then it was a she, was absorbing some small amount of the knowledge and wisdom of the ages. It was a place where we researched and wrote papers, as well as crammed for exams, when many a prayer was said perhaps foreshadowing this present chapel. Since the library was moved in 1972 to its current location, this room has had many uses, a study and lecture hall, the education department, the Irish and Polish cultural centers, all uses given to the development of the gifts of the Holy Spirit of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. It is with deep gratitude to God and to the vision, the insights, and the practicality of Sister Mary Reap and the generous generosity of many benefactors, especially Helen Demore, lovely, beautiful Helen that helped us in so many ways, that has brought us to this day. We who have had long histories with the Elms hold many precious memories of our original chapel, which we truly loved, and some of those memories have been ensconced here. However, to see this room converted into this magnificent chapel dedicated to St. Joseph, is to be assured that the spirit of the college and of the Sisters of St. Joseph will continue in an unbroken fashion. This space, as did our previous chapel, serves now as the heart of the campus. With great hope, we can just close our eyes now for a second and see and feel and unite with present and future members of this Elms community and its many friends who will gather here for worship and who will pray alone or together in order to deepen their relationship with God and present their many intentions. And so today, as we sense so deeply the presence of the Holy Spirit, we pray that this same spirit will guide our new president, Dr. Harry Dumay, and all the days 
that he will spend among us. Thank you, Kathleen. It's very appropriate that we begin with that blessing. It is now my distinct pleasure to introduce Dr. Harry Dumay. Trustees, Bishop Rosensky, Sisters of St. Joseph, friends of the college, students, faculty, and staff, let me begin by extending special thanks to all those who worked very hard to create this truly beautiful space. Starting with the architect, Kevin Kroback, from Juster Pope Fraser Architects, the construction company, McCormack Alum, Brian Doherty, the Vice President for Finance and Administration, and Mike Sullivan, Director of Facilities, the Campus Project Manager, Sister Carol Allen and Father Mark Stelzer, who made sure that through every, detailed, the, every detail we remain consistent with lit liturgical and canonical principles. And Carla Oleska, who worked with Sister Mary on marshalling the resources for this beautiful project. Sister Mary Reap, I'm told, had a special place in her heart for the reno renovation of this former library space into a beautiful chapel. She was intimately involved with every detail and shared her vision with many of you here today who supported it financially and otherwise. I imagine that her vision was for the physical space to make it easier for all who set foot in it to quiet down the many demands and distractions of their daily lives so that they can come in communion with their God. Looking at this magnificent, magnificent space, I believe that her vision for this chapel to be an oasis of sheer beauty and grandeur has been successfully completed. Ecclesiastes 3.11 says, he has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he has put eternity into men's heart. If beauty reminds us of the divine, this space should remind us that all good things come from God the creator who calls us to a life of beauty and grace. This beautiful chapel, located in the heart of the historic Berkman's building, is one more powerful reminder of our Catholic identity. Our students, staff, and faculty who walk by this chapel get to spend a moment of reflection in it, attend mass, or participate in a prayer service in it will experience the spiritual dimension that we are inviting them to develop in addition to their intellectual and social competencies. Through this physical space, we will once again unite with our neighbors in the celebration of the Eucharist and other religious ceremonies. We are truly grateful to all of those who supported this project and helped make the vision a reality. Particular thanks go to the Damore family, the unrestricted estate gift from Helen Damore provided the initial funding for this project. Michelle and Donald Damore also contributed in a significant way. Dick Dooley, Sheila Flynn, and the Roncari family, respectively, were also major contributors to this project. As mentioned before, many others contributed very generously. They are all listed in the program and we are so grateful for their many gifts to the college. May this chapel, so fittingly dedicated to the Sisters of St. Joseph, remind us every day of God's presence in our midst. May it serve as a constant source of support as we advance their legacy and mission. 
And now it is my distinct honor to invite Bishop Brzezinski, a great friend and supporter of the College of Our Lady of the Elms, to lead us in prayer as we ask God's blessing on this sacred space. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. peace be with you and with your spirit. Let us pray. Loving God, through the ages you have moved your people to build houses of prayer and prayers, and to set apart sacred spaces where they can be strengthened in word and sound. With gratitude for the vision and generosity of college administrators, benefactors, and friends who have made St. Joseph Chapel a reality, we ask your blessing on those gathered here today. Strengthened by your holy word, may your people be built into a spiritual house pleasing to you. Grant us through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of Genesis. Jacob left Beersheba and set out for Haran. When he reached a certain place, he stopped for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones there, he put it under his head and lay down to sleep. He had a dream in which he saw a stairway resting onto the earth. With its top reaching to heaven and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. There above it stood the Lord, and he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. Your descendants will be like the dust of earth, and you will spread out to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south. All people on earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. I am with you and will watch over you whenever you go, and I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. When Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought, surely the Lord is in his place, and I was not aware of it. He was afraid and said, how awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. This is the gates of heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Psalm 84, verse 1 through 8. Our response will be, Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts! My soul longs for the house of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Even the sparrow finds a home and the swallow a nest for her young. Your altar, O Lord, is my delight. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Happy are they who dwell in your house. Continually they praise you. They shall see the God of gods in Zion. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you are no longer strangers and sojourners, but you are fellow citizens with the Holy Ones and members of the household of God. Built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the capstone. Through him, the whole structure is held together and grows into a temple sacred in the Lord. In him, you also are being built together into a dwelling place of God in the spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
My sisters and brothers, the Lord is with you. And with you. Together we listen to a reading from the Holy Gospel as recorded by St. Luke. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth, and the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Every year his parents went to Jerusalem for the feast of Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went up for the feast according to their custom. After the feast was over, while his parents were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but they were unaware of it. Thinking he was in their company, they traveled on for a day. Then they began looking for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and at his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, son, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. Why were you searching for me, he asked. Didn't you know that I had to be in my father's house? But they still did not understand what he was saying to them. Jesus then went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. Mary, his mother, treasured all these things in her heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. It's been observed that since we fell out of God's favor at the Garden of Eden, we've tried to recapture that garden in so many ways. In the temple that was built in Jerusalem, the entry was built with mosaics of palm trees so that those who were entering felt that they were entering into a garden. They saw the trees on either side. We look at a more modern interpretation. Gote's Sagrada Familia in Barcelona. The cathedral pillars look like trees reaching up to the heavens. And so again, Gote tried to capture that spirit of the Garden of Eden. We've been trying to do that in many of our churches, our structures of having a place where we feel at one with God, as Adam and Eve did before the fall. And here in this sacred space, we feel that same presence, the presence of the Lord Jesus at one with his people, reminding us that although we may have fallen in the Garden of Eden and fallen from there, indeed, Salvation is still open to us. And so this St. Joseph Chapel, for each one of us, and for the students and the faculty and all who are involved in Elms College, is really that oasis, reminding us that even though our history from the Garden of Eden may have meant that we have fallen, this is the place where we are lifted up again because the presence of Christ is here, lifting us up time and time again. This space, indeed, is beautiful and is sacred. As we look towards the ceiling and see the beauty, our eyes are lifted up, not just to the ceiling, but our eyes are lifted up to heaven, to that place for where we long to be at one with our God. This place will be a place of solace for students who are struggling, perhaps wondering if they ever will get the lesson or the book that they're studying. This place will be for the faculty, a place where they can come from their classes, the busyness of the day, in the quiet moment with the Lord. This place indeed, as has been said, is the heart of the Elms College, 
For here is the physical manifestation of the heart of the mission of the elms, of lifting us up to God, of raising us up to that plane to which God truly calls us to be at one with him. And so with this dedication, as we bless this sacred space, as we consecrate it for this specific purpose, as we're surrounded by this beauty, may we always think here of the presence of God reaching out to us, lifting us up, and bringing us ever closer to him. Bless this house, O oh Lord, we pray. Make it safe by night and day. Bless these walls so firm and stout, keeping want and trouble out. Bless the roof and chimney tall. Let thy peace lie over all. Bless this door that it may prove ever open to joy and love. Bless these windows shining bright, letting in God's heavenly light. Bless the hearth a blazing there with smoke ascending like a prayer. Bless the folk who dwell within, keep them pure and free from sin. Bless us all that one may be. O oh Lord, to dwell with Thee, bless us all that one day we may dwell, O oh Lord, with Bishop Rosansky for joining us this evening. Our ceremony is concluded, but we invite you to take your time and drink in the beauty of this room. In the stillness of my longing heart, the Lord is ever near. Surely the presence of the Lord in this place.